All right, we're stepping back to some of the statics discussions here. Uh, draw the shear and moment diagram for the beam shown. So the beam shown is over, over here. I've got uh, two reactions, reaction one, reaction two. I've got a uniform load across the entire, uh, across the entire beam. Uh, I've got uh, a singular load, a point load coming down there, that's seven kips. Um, I've got some numbers on here, but I actually don't really care about the numbers. You don't really need the numbers to be able to draw uh, the shear uh, and moment diagrams. Uh, before we jump into doing it, I'm going to break these out into two separate uh, elements here. So here's an example of just uh, a typical beam with uh, one single point load on it. When we do the shear diagram, what that's going to be, we have this load going up and then that load going down and then the other load going back up again. So from a shear standpoint, that's, that's going to get us that flat line across, that big drop down, the flat line across, and then back up to zero. And remember, it's always got to get back to zero if it's in equilibrium. Uh, so then comes the moment diagram. And there's a bunch of different ways that you can think about this. For me, when you're talking about diagrams, I actually prefer to think of it graphically. So the way that I think about it, uh, like I say, there's about three different ways to do this, but the way that I think about it is that the value that's on the shear diagram at a given point, so let's say a few feet off here, let's say we're talking about a point right through, through there, so a point a few feet off that edge, edge. Uh, the value that, is, that this diagram is expressing of the shear diagram is going to tell you the slope of the moment diagram. So the value is going to tell you the slope of the moment diagram. Well, you notice here on this uh, shear diagram that that's a flat line going across both at the upper and the lower level. Uh, so that flat line uh, means that the value of the shear diagram is a consistent even number uh, in these two different scenarios, which means that the slope is going to be a consistent slope in those two. So when I have a point load like this, it leads to a sort of boxy looking shear diagram, which leads to a little peaked roof of a uh, moment diagram. If I have a uniform load, then what I have is I have that reaction going up, and then I have a consistent load going down. So I have a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit down, right? And so that's going to uh, mean that I am uh, going to end up with that diagonal line uh, as it goes down, and then it comes back up to cut back to that zero. So I get these triangular shapes when I have a uniform load like this. Well, like we said, if we take at any given point the value of the uh, shear diagram, the value at that point of the shear diagram, it's going to tell you the slope at that point of the shear diagram. So here, in this location right there, we have a fairly sl small value, but it's a positive value. So we know it's going upward. Uh, here, at the very edge, we have uh, a large, larger value, and it's also positive, so we know it's steeper. So this is going steeply up and then eventually nodding off to zero because at the zero point, it's going to be flat across. And then now it's, because it's on the negative side of that line, it's going to be going back down in the same format. So if I have a uniform load, I've got triangles and then curves. If I have a point load, I've got uh, rectilinear boxes and then these angle lines for the moment connections, moment uh, diagrams. So, okay, we come over to here. Uh, and what does that mean for our actual drawing of uh, an actual shear diagram? Uh, and we're going to end up doing something like going up, sloping down, a big drop, continuing the slope, that's probably not quite steep enough, and then back up. So that's going to be our shear diagram. So we have a positive value that starts higher and gets lower 
to eventually where the, uh, that point goes. And then we have a negative value that starts sort of as a low slope and becomes a bigger slope. So that's going to do, we know that there's an important thing happening right through there. So it's going to be something like, doesn't go to flat, it's still angling up. And this one is also doesn't go to zero, so it's going to be still angling down. This one's going to be a little tricky here. Sorry, that's supposed to, I'm going <laughs> to cut it there. That's supposed to be an arc. Uh, but it's still sloping upwards by the time it gets there. So that's how this is going to work. Uh, you very quickly uh, just map out how the, uh, the, the uh, loads are loading, what the shear diagram is going to do, and from that, graphically, you can just visually see what the shape is going to be. I know it's going to be curved because of that uniform load. Um, these would meet each other. They, they, sorry, it's a little hard to make it do that, um, but uh, those would actually connect at that spot. Um, and uh, then it'll find its way in negative. It's sort of starting off low slope and then steepening up as it gets down to the end, uh, end side. One of the things to remember about this is these things are totally just fictions of our imaginations. Uh, these are structural engineers, how they think about numbers and like there is nothing sacred about any of this. We just happen to be looking at it from one side. We could look at it from the other side. We could decide that the reactions go down instead of up. We could decide, like, these are just ways of thinking about it that help us to see things like where the moment is the highest, where the moment is zero, where the uh, uh, shear is the highest. Um, it's just a tool by which we use. There's nothing sacred about these things. They're just diagrams, and you can flip them around and use them in all kinds of different ways. So I've shown beams because beams, I think, are easier for people to understand. But you can have very similar things on walls, on columns, on uh, you know, purlins, on any number of different pieces. Uh, and it's that same basic idea that you're just diagramming how the forces are working in order to be able to make decisions from uh, what you would need to know. Like, can I put a hole in the beam in this location? Uh, does it make sense? Or you know, is something else, to, does it need to be more robust at that spot? So this is the kind of tools that get shown. Uh, you won't have to do a bunch of these, but uh, you will probably, you won't actually draw them, you'll choose them typically. Although under 5.0, you may have to draw them. Uh, but uh, you will have to, to choose among them. And if you can see that fact that uh, the point loads give you the boxy shear diagram and then the angled moment diagram, and that the uniform loads give you the triangle shear load, diagram and then the curving moment diagram. Once you see that uh, and you understand that sort of slope is uh, related to the, to the amount of the shear diagram, uh, slope of the, uh, the moment diagram is related to the amount on the shear diagram at that point. Once you, once you sort of have that in your head, it's actually really easy to pick out the correct answers. Mm -hmm.